Hello and welcome back. Now, in this video, I'll be going over all the key quotations and word level analysis you need to remember when it comes to memorizing key quotations for the main characters and of mice and men. So we'll begin with George. And as you can see here, they're essentially, these are the key quotations to remember and to memorize, especially when you're writing an essay on of mice and men for either your coursework or exams. So let's begin with the first quotation to remember when it comes to George's character. This is to do with the description that Steinbeck gives him, okay? And he's described as having restless eyes and sharp, strong features. Now, the word level analysis you want to do here is point out the sibilance S here, so sharp and strong. And what the sibilance does in this instance is it portrays George as very shrewd, very cunning, always thinking, always calculating, almost like a fox. And of course, this stands in stark contrast to Lenny, who's quite big, hulking, bear-like. So he has far more power than George, physically speaking. However, he's not as sharp-witted and as intelligent as George. Now, the second quotation to bear in mind with George's character is when at the beginning in the first chapter, he tells Lenny and instructs him, I want you to come, ellipsis, and hide in the brush. This is vital instruction for Lenny because he's basically telling him, in case there's any trouble, we've now found work. In case there's any trouble, we come back here, okay, to the river, but more specifically, come and hide in the brush. And already this kind of foreshadows that Lenny might do something which will get them in trouble and George doesn't quite trust that things will go okay. Of course, we then do realise that Lenny does uh, what gets him in trouble and George ultimately, sadly, has to kill him, okay? Now, the word level analysis you want to remember with this quotation particularly is firstly, it's an imperative sentence. An imperative sentence just means a sentence that issues a command. That's the first thing you want to talk about and that's a structural feature. The second word level analysis is mention and point out the verb hide, this idea that he tells Lenny that he needs to hide. And again, this is interesting because what this illustrates is brute force. So Lenny's just brute force, his sheer power isn't enough for him to survive in this modern world. He also needs to have the cunning, the intellectual ability that he sadly lacks. Hence, he has to be reduced to a creature that's hiding in the shadows once he makes a mistake. Now, the third quotation to bear in mind for George's character is when he states to Lenny, guys like us, ellipsis, are the loneliest guys in the world, okay? So guys like us, ellipsis, are the loneliest guys in the world. Now, the word level analysis you want to do here, firstly, is the superlative adjective loneliest. Remember, an adjective is just a word that describes a noun. There's also comparative adjectives, better, worse, so it compares two things. And superlative is the most extreme amount of that thing. Best, worst, loneliest, happiest, okay? So this is a superlative adjective loneliest. And of course, this whole sentence is hyperbole. It's over-exaggeration. And again, what this quotation is important in illustrating is how the life of the ranch worker, the immigrant worker, the person like George and Lenny who are, were constantly in search of work, that life was a very difficult and lonely life and hence why George and Lenny actually stood out in contrast to all the other ranch workers. They were quite lonely, they were very um, individualistic, however they're also very very lonely and very alone, okay? And of course there's almost this element of hope, there's almost this brotherhood that's captured in this quotation that George wants to illustrate. Now the other quotation to remember when it comes to George's character is when he's articulating the American dream, the dream for both him and Lenny to own their own farm, to have a small house with rabbits and animals that they contend to. And he states, as he's articulating this dream, we're gonna have a little house. Now here, there's two word level analysis you want to do here. The first is the collective pronoun we. This is in contrast to I, okay? And again, this shows that they have a, 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 a community spirit together. They have a brotherhood, okay? The second thing is the adjective little. Again, this shows just how even if they have an American dream, their dream is very modest and it's almost heartwarming for us to read as readers, but equally very heart-wrenching when it really goes beyond their reach once Lenny kills Curly's wife. The other quotation to bear in mind is when Curly turns on Lenny, so he's really angry and he's frustrated, more jealous of Slim's power and the influence that he has over his wife, but he vents this frustration and this anger and he attacks Lenny. Lenny doesn't know what to do and he only acts once George tells him, get him Lenny, and this is what causes Lenny to crush Curly's hand. Now, Word level analysis in here, actually, it's more structural point. You want to talk about imperative sentence. George is giving him an order. 
What this is illustrating is that George has all the power, kind of like in this Darwinian environment whereby Lenny, he's really, really strong, but he doesn't know what to do. It's George that really almost pulls the levers and tells him what to do, okay? And that really captures it very, very clearly. Now, the other quotation to remember is when George eventually finds Lenny before all the other men do once Lenny has killed Curly's wife. And Lenny says, you must be really angry at me. And George says the following, I ain't mad, full stop. I never been mad. Now here the word level analysis you want to do is a repetition of this term, mad, it's repeated twice. And what this is showing is George's paternalistic attitude, his fatherly attitude towards Lenny. He's almost telling him, I still love you, almost like a son. And again, this is so heart-wrenching as we're reading because of course, ultimately George realizes because he loves Lenny so much, but Lenny is incapable of wielding his power in a positive way, he has to kill him. It's almost a mercy killing, okay? But he's showing Lenny before he kills him that he actually has never been angry with him he actually loved him okay the final quotation to remember when it comes to George's character is the description of how he kills Lenny his demeanor when he's killing Lenny he was businesslike and you want to talk about the adjective in terms of word, analysis, word level analysis business now here this business-like approach actually interestingly ties into the capitalist idea, this notion of making money, seeing things for, from a very cold lens of profit. Now, George no longer sees Lenny as profitable in his endeavor to get security, to get a job, to keep a job, and to ultimately achieve the American dream. So he has to kill him. That's on the one hand. However, also his business-like demeanor shows maybe that he has st uh, stoically accepted defeat. He's accepted that the American dream is now out of the reach. And so he kills Lenny. And with Lenny's death, he kills his dream of the American dream. So that's it when it comes to George's character and key quotations to remember for his character.